hi and welcome again to my channel i hope all of you doing good so with me here is the nokia 2660 flip now this is the third and the last mobile device which was launched recently and i've done uh, a full walkthrough for the nokia 2104 g and just a couple of days ago on the nokia 5710 uh, express audio so for those of you who have yet to watch the video on the nokia 5710 express audio uh, i do uh, suggest you to check on that because there are certain important differences between both these devices which would help you to decide which one you would want to purchase with that said this should be available in more markets there are already retailers in india already selling this so i'm just going to put this aside for now and concentrate on the 2660 flip now this 2660 flip is also going to be available in india very soon I saw the marketing material with a price tag of less than 5000 rupees which is actually quite good but the question is who is this device meant for and i'll try to answer it towards the end of the video for now this is a 2660 flip this is for the chinese market so some of the things are written in mandarin we'll try to do our best to decipher what it means so you can see that there are two display sizes the external display is 1.77 inch the internal display is the larger one 2.8 inch similar to the display size of 82104g I believe this refers to the large keypad probably a large 1450 ampere battery which is the same as all the other two devices we should give or last easily for a couple of days this is probably referring to the loudspeaker function i suppose and this might be referring to the sos function which i will cover a bit later the others are the standard affair with all the recent launches for glte you've got an mp3 player a micro sd card and also charging via a usb cable micro usb 2.0 now this accessory the cs101 is a charging cradle which is sold separately and i'll tell you why this is only meant for the nokia 2660 flip and not for the other devices so this has to with the target audience for this device so we will be covering a bit later on that so this is how it looks like it comes in three different colors mine is the blue it also comes in a beautiful red and also a black color i've done a, a, an unboxing earlier but this is for those of you who are interested just a simple unboxing while we do a full walkthrough on all the features of the 2660 flip i'm going to put this aside and see what the contents are so do uh note that this is for the chinese market it might not be the same for the other market so this comes with the battery so i'm going to put it here now uh, on the back you can see more chinese wording i can't really make it out so you can see the uh, probably the user manual some in some further information on the device but all these are in mandarin difficult to make out and just a micro usb cable so there is no charging uh, adapter given along with the purchase for the 2660 uh, 2660 clip for the chinese market so i'm just going to put all this aside so the battery is a 4450 mAh battery as you can see here so there it is this is how the battery is now this is how the device looks like so do take note on how to pry open the back cover so that you don't struggle do note that this is the loudspeaker this is not the slot for you to pry open the back panel okay so this is in fact the uh, slot for that so just get your nail in there and then just pry open so the experience of opening the back panel is much easier than the one on the 5710 Express uh, sorry, for Express Audio which I struggled earlier on so it supports nano SIM I'm just going to insert my SIM card here so this is a dual SIM version so you just need to slide it in now this is the micro SD slot and this is the SIM 2 slot so I'm just going to put the battery in here and then that's it so i'm going to boot this up now this is the chinese variant of the 2660 flip uh, if i recall correctly this is ta1480 so some of the softwares might be different than the uh, 2660 flip available elsewhere so this is how the device is once it boots up now I'm going to talk a bit about the exterior of the device. Now I've told you that the build quality is actually quite good. In fact, I would rate that this is the best uh, build quality among all the uh, recently launched feature phones, especially when it compares to the devices like the A210 and also the 5710. 
Now, I felt that the build on the other two devices were actually quite good, but the 2660 flip looks to be more sturdy. You, you can see how compact it is built, and um, it just feels slightly harder compared to the uh, back panel of the 266 uh, of the 8210 or the 5710 Express Audio. Now, on the front, you've got a 0 0.3 megapixel. Uh, camera along with an LED flash. You've got a Nokia branding here along with the uh, microphone on the front. Now on the rear, pretty much there's nothing other than the loudspeaker, nothing much on the top. On the left hand side, you've got this uh, 3.5 millimeter head jack along with the micro USB slot for charging. This is the pin for the charging dock, which I'll be showing a little uh, while later. Uh, on the right hand side, you've got the volume rocker and a button. This button serves two purposes. The first thing is to activate the secondary exterior dis uh, display here. And also if you were to long press on this button, it can be used to activate for your emergency contact. So this is the SOS button, just access it by long pressing it. Now, despite being a Chinese variant, this is, uh, I'm currently in Malaysia, this uh, SIM card is actually using DG. You can see it supports 4G with voice over LTE. Now, uh, what about the flip itself? Now, this is a flip phone and the flip experience is, I would say, nice. It's just a very, very quiet flip. It doesn't snap or anything. And it looks pretty decent. It looks pretty sturdy. You, uh, the mechanism, the hinge mechanism is all built within this uh, uh, compartment here and it feels just good it's just that you don't have any specific angle to actually let it uh, to stay or anything in case you want it like that you know it might not be staying there for, for some time it will actually flip on the opposite side so with that said um, this is the exterior of the 2664 flip now what about the software side now I believe that this device is actually meant for the elderly population because of all the other features that it has that is not present on the 8210 or the 5710 Express. Now one of it is the large keypad here. You can see the differences of the keypad compared to the other two devices. And this keypad is not just large, they are very well spaced apart. And this is what makes the device uh, stand out in terms of usability for the LD population. And even the center button is recessed. Let's say you have difficulty to know where it is. Now the center button is actually recessed. I hope you can see this here. So this tells you that you are at the center and it's actually easier to uh, navigate your buttons. The same reason uh, is seen on the charging side. So I believe that the 5710 and the 8210 uh, has no charging dock because if uh, the elderly population or any, anyone that is using the device have difficulties with the fine movement of the hand struggling to charge this device, they can just slot it in into the charging dock and that's about it. So this makes the life a bit easy. This is why the 2660 flip might be the best candidate when it comes to devices meant for elderly population. So with that said, we're going to take a look into the software side. So pretty much this is running on S30+, Plus, similar to the 5710 and the 826 uh, and the 8210. So being a Chinese variant device, it might have certain additional software or might lag in certain software compared to the other two devices that I've reviewed earlier. So uh, we'll talk just a bit about the display. It's a TFT display, 2.8 inch, which is similar in size to the one on the 8210, larger than the one on uh, 5710. The external display is about 1.7 inch. Only one of the displays can be uh, activated at a time. Now. The exterior display here shows you the time, the notifications, as well as the date. You can switch it on and off with this button, like I said earlier. You can also use it to control your volume, all right? So it's quite easy in terms of that, but you cannot use your secondary display uh, for your selfie because this camera does not support any selfie uh, features. So that said, uh, the menu button themselves. So let's say that uh, you have difficulties in your visual acuity uh, If you think that the icons are small, you can actually make them easy 
by just enlarging it. So all you need to do is to go to the system, you go to the main menu view, and then change the, the way the menu looks like. So now you have a single icon appearing for the entire screen, which is make the things easier for elderly people, especially if they have difficulties in seeing. So I'm just gonna change it back and we'll go to the next feature here. So I'm just gonna go back to the three by three uh, uh, arrangement. So calls are pretty much standard across all the three devices. Uh, if you have contacts, you can actually sync them through your with your Android device. So uh, all you need to do is go to the settings and sync Android uh, via Bluetooth so you can use that for your uh, transfer of contacts. So this is the five contacts for emergency purposes which you, you can actually assign the number. So if you were to long press, it can contact this number. So I'm going to go in into gallery is pretty much standard now this is a, an app called himalaya i believe this is just for the chinese variant of the device it looks like a podcast device a podcast app can't really verify it because i can't read mandarin but it seems to be a uh, an app made for podcasting so you can probably listen to podcasts so for example this So it's taking some time to load. Okay, I can't understand what it says now. I'm just going to press on that. Something is not right here. So let's go to something else just to show you that we support certain apps. All right, here we go. Okay, unfortunately it is in Chinese so I can't really make it out what it is actually for but I believe this is an app for podcast I just hope that uh, the devices meant for um, markets outside China would get similar love in terms of the uh, app support for this uh, S30 plus device so messaging is pretty straightforward you have this uh, T9 predictive text input I believe which helps you with making your life easy I, okay. now one thing that is uh, to be noted here is that the buttons they are large they are well spaced apart the tactile feedback is actually quite good but they are not elevated they are actually quite flush except for the center button which is recessed all other buttons are actually quite flushed so typing experience is pretty decent I would say now we're going to go to the camera in a while now this is the only game which is available in this Chinese variant device. I don't have any other games available uh, in this device. This is Snake Xenzia. Uh, I showed you in my earlier reviews how you can actually kill some time playing this game. If you get bored with it, you can change the level. You can also change the game type according to whichever uh, things that you feel improve your um, entertainment uh, level. So pretty much that. I don't have any other games here. So I believe this is probably limited in the Chinese unit. Probably more games is available in the global unit. Um, this is radio. We're going to come back to this in a while. Videos. I don't have any videos to play here. So let's go to the, the settings here. So if you go to the system settings, you can see some of the features that is available here. Do note that uh, this, even though this is a feature phone, it is capable of receiving online software update. So if you go to product info, you can see that this is TA1480, my carrier is DG at the moment. Uh, some other information here, firmware, 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 yep, pretty much that. Now, uh, when you go to messages, as usual, you can actually receive your MMS here. You can control the backlight brightness. Uh, you can choose what uh, the type of notification to be popped up or the amount of notification that you want to show only the icon or the details of it which is pretty neat for a feature phone and if you go to connectivity you have bluetooth so 
One thing peculiar about the Bluetooth on this device is that GSM Marina states that this is Bluetooth 4.2 instead of the Bluetooth 5.0 which is available on 8.2.1.0 and the 5.7.1.0. Bluetooth 5.0 supports low energy means it conserves battery and also has improved connectivity in terms of the uh, stability of the connection but 4.2 not really. I'm not sure whether this information is accurate or not but if it is I'm not sure why uh, HMD Global decided to go with this. So dual SIM, you've got all this. You can choose actually which uh, SIM to allow the data connection as usual. And personalization allows you to change your uh, ringing tone, your wallpapers for your background. The theme, you can just change the accents of the colors as you can see here, it's just changing. Keypad, yep, you can assign some speed dial to certain key numbers security as usual now this is uh, as stated it supports uh, voice over LTE so this is something which is good so you've got the context for your SOS as I've mentioned earlier uh, this is the message that you would want to pop up and the settings you can either choose call and even message if needed so some of the information you can put is some basic information like your name, birth, height, weight, address, language, context, uh, important information such as any underlying conditions you have, allergies, your blood type, vaccination, medication and other info. Now this is very helpful in case of emergency services where um, let's say if you were to found unconscious or nobody knows you and people have access to this information then it could be really be life-saving information. So. These are the features that make the Nokia 2660 an ideal phone for the LD population because it really has a lot of these things to make uh, their experience better as well as additional features that probably uh, it is important for this age group. So just moving on, uh, calculator, pretty much the standard one, you've got an alarm clock. Uh, music if you have a new SD card you can actually play you can have the touch function here and let's see you have voice recorder which is actually quite good files so due to the lack of games you can see that this has an additional uh, more free memory compared to the ones on the 5710 and the 8210 which has about 24 megabytes of free memory available so again you've got this redundant access to torch I'm not sure why the need for two separate so this is counter basically counts the amount of data used by your uh, network provider local calendar which doesn't sync to google uh, if you are expecting that this is just for the device alone some extra features countdown timer stopwatch again torch converter app and this this is a browser that I have no uh, idea what it was earlier. I was speculating that this could be some special version of Opera Mini, but it is not. So uh, if we go to the bookmark, let me show you here. Now the 5710 and the 8210 uses Opera Mini, which is the best browser to use, especially on a Symbian device or a feature phone because the browser is really, really good. But uh, what looks quite similar to the Opera browser is not an Opera browser because let's say if you were to look into the details what is my browser right so we're just going to search so Go to this website. Now you can see here my web browser is Dorado Web Browser version 1.0 for Nokia 2660. Alright, so the other Nokia phone that apparently has this browser is Nokia 105. Now it's a pretty decent browser in terms of speed, but I do come across occasionally that uh, the memory is full and need to probably clear the web page and then load a new one uh, but that is that I'm not sure whether this is uh, the standard browser across all 2660 device or it is just meant for the Chinese variant I believe probably it's just meant for Chinese variant because 8210 and 5710 has um, Opera Mini browser and I tried installing Opera Mini but unfortunately 
it is not successful. So I can't seem to find any uh, app that can be installed. I can't have, I, I mean, I don't have uh, any options to download or to buy any game. So these are the things that are lacking in the Chinese variant. So do take note. Uh, of course, it is cheap. Uh, it is the Chinese variant cost as as probably as much as the ones in the UK. Uh, there's no bloat uh, in the price or whatever, but it does seem to lack certain apps that are available on the other devices. So one good thing is this Himalaya app. I mean, if you can understand Mandarin, uh, probably then this would be beneficial for you. Now let's take a look at the camera. So I, the camera experience should be the same with the ones on the 8210 and the 5710. So I believe this is the this is the selfie but unfortunately like I said earlier you can't see you can't use the secondary display because only one display can be activated at a time so you can see that if I were to flip it open this display goes off so even though I activated the camera now the secondary display doesn't off so it cannot be used as a monitor to see your uh, face especially if you're going to take a selfie on it and you can see how the camera angle is, so you probably need to bring it slightly up in order to be seen now uh, the good thing is uh, we do have some camera effects like I've shared earlier so you've got the black and white you've got the blue green yellow red canvas negative the negative one is the coolest among all and this actually just adds into the um, product value so some other features that you have is probably the timer burst mode uh, you can choose to save images in high quality choose to whether to have the shutter uh, sound activated or not your flash options uh, pretty much the same with the 8210 and the 5710 again you can record i believe this is just vga quality the best thing is Though being a feature phone, you can actually record the videos in certain effects. You've got normal, again, black and white, blue, green, yellow, red, canvas. Again, you can record the entire thing in a negative uh, effect, which is pretty good for a uh, uh, feature phone. Now, let's talk about the radio. So, if you were to watch my review on the 8210 and the 5710, the 8210 has, uh, and all these devices actually support wireless radio, which means that you don't actually need to have the cable connected. Uh, but in certain conditions, such as a very close setup, then probably you will need the uh, wired earphone attached to improve the uh, reception. So you do have that with the 8210 and the 5, uh, sorry, with the 2660, because they do support this 3.5 millimeter head jack. But that option is not available on the 5710. The other peculiarity here is that uh, you can actually listen to the radio via the, your earbuds on the 5710, but I can't seem to do that on the 8210. So I'm going to try whether this is the same case with the uh, 2660. So with me here is my trusted uh, Nokia Clarity Pro earbud. Now for those of you uh, who have not had the chance to uh, check on my review, I would suggest you do check on this. This is one of the best earbuds made by HMD Global. So I'm just going to connect this first. You can see the beautiful blue halo around the earbuds here. So we're just going to connect it. So to connect it, all you need to do is just go to settings, go to connectivity, go to Bluetooth and see the devices which are found. So activate Bluetooth first for that. Now, add new device. So there you go. So stop and pair. So it is connecting now. And as you can see, audio switch to this accessory. All right. So I'm going to try play the radio and see whether the audio comes out through this. So we're going to go to the radio. Now, so it seems to be the same case as on the 8210, where you cannot channel the radio to the Bluetooth earbud, but you can definitely play your MP3 music and have them 
uh, transmitted to your Bluetooth earbud, but you can't do the same with the radio. But this is not the case with the 5710. So I do suggest uh, you all to see my review on the 5710 where I actually explain this in uh, detail and show you that it actually can connect with the uh, Bluetooth earbuds. So there you go. But whatever said and done, uh, it is quite good to have a wireless uh, radio options. As you can see, as you can see, it is actually pretty good despite me being in a very, very compact and close environment at the moment. So this is the Nokia 2660 Flip. And I think this is the best device that you can get for your parents or your loved one because this device is not only built well, it has additional features which could be life-saving for them. So with that said, I hope you actually enjoyed this review. And uh, if I were to summarize, since I have all the three feature phones with me here, if I have to summarize who these devices are meant for, I would say this goes to the younger you who were to see Nokia 8210 when it was initially launched. Now you can have a reboot classic of it. This is for the newer generation of people who just wants um, a detox phone over the weekend with some additional features, then this would be the ideal one for you. And this would be the best phone for the elderly population for all the good features that I've said. So I still have one uh, segment to cover and that is the cradle charger. So I'm just going to do a simple unboxing of the cradle charger and let's hope I, uh, it works well as intended. So this is sold separately, okay? Now, as you can see, it only comes with the cradle itself. It doesn't have the cable because you will have to use your cable from your uh, the, the phone itself. So I'm just going to connect it to my USB cord here. All right, so there you go. So this is where you connect them. All right, so I'm just going to seems to be loose okay now let's try I believe this cable is probably not suited for this okay there you go now it's in so I hope you can see this if I were to tilt it this way all right so you need to push it all the way in and just slide your phone in. So the moment it charges, then you have this uh, charging icon. So why is this uh, important? Probably because, like I said, for the elderly population, some of them might have some difficulties with the fine movement of the hand, and they might be struggling to um, to just put the charging cable into the slot, like how I was having trouble of actually putting them in. So in this kind of scenario, it's just easy to just slot this in and let it charge, and this makes their life easy. So this is the reason why you don't have the uh, same option available for the 8210 or the 5710 because you don't have such pins at the bottom, but you do have it um, here. So there you go. Yep. So these pins are around here for that purpose. So that concludes my review on the Nokia 2660 Flip. Now, if you have further questions, do hit me up on Twitter. I am more active there and more readily available to answer your questions. And uh, I do suggest to watch my review on the other two devices to understand what it can offer and how these devices are different from each other. So with that said, I hope all of you take care. And it's been a very, very a nice experience to actually be able to test each of the feature phones which were initially launched. I'm looking forward to what Nokia or HMD Global has to bring for IFA. Till then, I hope all of you take care and stay safe.